I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Central America as an immigrant and as an expat. I've been living in Central America for the last three years solid and overall over a period of nine years and have gotten a lot of experience doing that and it has been a wonderful experience. But it's not a wonderful experience for everybody. Some people have some pretty big failures even when they make the attempt. Now we give a lot of warnings about ways to do things. We say don't just dip your toes and do this and do that and Sometimes that's not enough, so I want to look at a recent failure I was told about and talk about what may have led to that. We don't know the details, but what may have gone on and how maybe that could have gone better for the, for the folks in question. So let's get to that right after that bump. When we're talking about relocation and you're coming down to a new country, one of the things that we say is don't just dip your toes, you want to actually jump in. Because if you go part way, there's often some big hurdles that people who either don't do it at all or go all the way are going to not have to experience. So often we say trying to just ease your way into living abroad is not going to go as well as you may think. It seems like that may be a way to kind of make it all easier or less scary or maintain your income or just be less traumatic dramatic, but it often just isn't and will often lead to people feeling like things are very difficult. One of the problems that I'm about to talk about in the experiences that we just witnessed is that the idea that some people never get past treating relocation like vacation. When you're on vacation or you're traveling, you generally, there are exceptions. Camille from the channel, for example, is an incredibly frugal traveler. She spends huge amounts of time traveling around the world in, on incredibly low budgets, but that is not the norm and she doesn't really settle into a place but she's able to do the hostel life, backpacking, and keep it really, really cheap. But for most people, when you're traveling, you're going to be spending a lot more money than you would be if you are moving into a place, if you're becoming an expat or even becoming a long-term digital nomad. When you're a traveler, you know you're gonna be paying a premium for everything. You're gonna be going to a hotel, you're gonna be eating at restaurants, you're not gonna shop for yourself. There's just all kinds of things you're gonna do. You're gonna pay a premium. This is anywhere in the world, has nothing to do with a specific location. You're gonna pay a lot more because you're on vacation. It's this special trip for you. It's not your home, so you have to pay more. It's just the nature of things, right? There's very little opportunity to save money while you're in travel mode. And most people get this. However, there are people when they relocate that sometimes have no concept of this or very little concept of this and can fool themselves by evaluating a place based on being in a travel mode and may also get stuck in a travel mode. Now, we have a success story or a potential one that is going on right now. Jimmy was just on the show. He came down to do a test scouting mission to Nicaragua. He's done a whole bunch of online work, done his homework, has a pretty good idea of what he's looking for, thinks he knows what he's going to get into, but he wanted to verify that the things he was seeing on the channel here and other places was accurate. He came down and is in fact, uh, feeling that it is better, I think, than what he was seeing on the show rather than uh, not living up to expectation. It exceeds expectation, seems to be, where he's at with it, the whole uh, culture of the place. Some of those intangible, ineffable uh, items for him were slam dunks. He found that the party scene and the nightlife and just the, the general uh, feel of the place was so to his liking that he's just super excited and trying to figure out how to make his final move as quickly as possible. And I think we'll be seeing him on the show as soon as that happens, hopefully in just a number of weeks. He came down and did a more or less five-day scouting mission. Now, he may be off a few days, but he came down with this. He did his research, did a scouting mission. He's footloose and fancy free. It's just him and his dog. He is eliminating all of his worldly possessions back home in the north, and uh, he is just figuring out how he can get rid of all those things, get his dog, and and move down here with Poe, his dog. Because he's just him, just him and his dog, he has a lot of flexibility to come and go and deal with things. He, he just doesn't have a lot to worry about. If he had to live in a hostel or live in a small apartment or rent a house or move to a different city, any of those things he could do really, really easily. He doesn't have any real limitations because of uh, because of how little he has to deal with. He doesn't have possessions. He's got to move down, just coming down with with his backpacks or whatever, probably with some luggage. So he's in a great position where he's done his research, done his scouting, and now he's coming. He's not dipping his toe, he's jumping in, but he's not going in blind. He did the research, 
and did a scouting trip to make sure that at the very least, it is unlikely that there are to be big problems, right? So sometimes uh, people come down and find that just like the, the weather isn't something they like or the culture isn't something they like or hearing Spanish is they thought there'd be more English or just whatever. And that can be really surprising. And just a few days will give you a, okay, I can handle this. It doesn't mean it's the right place for you, but it tells you often enough that you know, okay, I could do this for the next year and make a decision after that. And if I decide I don't like it, it can only be so bad. And if I do like it, great, I can stay, right? But you're not in a position where you're like, oh no, what have I done? I'm trapped here for a year. Yeah, you don't want that, the feeling to happen. So the failure that we're talking about, we had a large family move down just recently and a few things went wrong. One, they didn't do any scouting before they came down. This was a, a couple plus a large number of children, so large that they don't fit in normal housing and hotels. Like they need multiple rooms, special vehicles, all kinds of complicated things. So before coming down and moving, they never came up with a let's go scout it out, or at least the parents didn't come down and scout it out. So there was a lot of shock as to what the country is. That went okay. There wasn't, as far as I know, a particular problem with finding out that the country wasn't to their liking. They got down and said, okay, yep, this is good. Everything seems fine. They were doing great. And we talked to them a bit as this process was going on, but not a ton. It was a little bit strange because uh, I had spoken to them online before they moved down. They were very excited. And then when they got here, there was very little communications. Um, they did reach out a few times. We did communicate, just not anywhere near as much as I would have anticipated, given that they may have been having problems. But they never reached out and were like, oh, we're having issues, we can't figure anything out, never happened. They just had a few questions and they reached out and sometimes they were a little bit like, what do we do? And then it's like, you just do this and like, oh, okay, we're good, right? So the first mistake, they didn't scout. They jumped full in without that scouting. That is not what we mean by jumping in, you know, and don't dip your toe. We don't mean don't scout a location. I've been pretty clear about this, but just this was missed. So Jimmy got it perfect. Maybe another week would have been good, but he's got to leave his dog behind. And he's very like, he could just go back. If, if everything was totally wrong, not a big deal. So he's got that flexibility. It's not, it's not like he has a bunch of kids and has to do like huge decision making. He can just rent a place and just go back, like whatever. So that was the first thing. So without doing that scouting trip, every single thing was really shocking for them. And just not in a bad way, just they had to learn as they went. And that's not something you want to be doing during a move, right? You don't want to put those two things together because then it becomes overwhelming really easily. So let's make sure we're avoiding that. The second thing was because they hadn't scouted it out, they were also in this overwhelming vacation mode. I don't think, and I, I mean this from having spoken to them, I don't believe that they had ever traveled to another country before, any of them, let alone the whole family. And so they had a whole bunch of, this is amazing, we're in a new country, there's all these new sights and sounds and flavors and just experiences to have. And they were so caught up by that, that from the time they arrived until I spoke to them was about 48 hours. And during that time, instead of working on relocating or doing things that they needed to do. They went to a tourist town that made absolutely no sense for their goals and spent all that time doing vacation-y things, which is fun, right? But imagine if you were moving from anywhere in the world to Orlando, Florida, and you have never been outside of your home country before, definitely never seen the United States. You flew to Orlando, you have a very tight schedule, you have a lot going on, you're moving your whole family, you're super stressed, and instead of working on finding an apartment or doing anything you need to do, you decide to go to Disney World for a few days. You know what? Disney World's going to be there later. That would be a great thing to do once you've established yourself in Florida. It'll be way easier to do. You'll understand the context more. You'll enjoy it more. You won't be stressed because you're worried about finding an apartment. But they used their most critical time to be on vacation and just didn't do anything involving their relocation project during that time, which if you have plenty of time and you know yourself, like that's fine. But it wasn't fine for them. So they burned a few days. Then they ran into some problems. They didn't have any fallbacks because they had so many people in their family. Their group was so large. They weren't able to easily get an Airbnb or a hotel or anything like that. They needed so many rooms that it made it, even here in Nicaragua, a little bit expensive. So they then um, ended up having a problem with their Airbnb because they had had a problem with their flight. They tried to change their schedule. All of this happening purely because they were in vacation mode. Had they been actually looking for a place to live or anything like that, none of these things would likely have happened. Maybe, but not the things that actually happened. So the things that went wrong were all cumulative because they were in full-on party vacation mode. We helped them find a place where they were able to stay for a week or two while they figured things out. So this was about four or five days into their trip. 
We had no idea if they're actually going to do it or not. They never communicated. So that's another thing, right? If you've got people who are helping you, make sure you stay in contact and stay communicative because there's probably a lot of questions and just ask them, right? We're, we don't have a service here. We're not charging money from anybody. So this isn't like, we're like, Hey, pay us to get, no, if you've got resources on the ground, I'm not saying me, right? But you got resources on the ground. You got people to ask questions of be in contact when they're like, Hey, how's it going? Everything. Okay. Do you need anything? Don't just ignore them and wait for things to go horribly wrong. And often you only need a couple seconds of question. Hey, which road do I take for this? Oh, who should I call as a, what app do I use to get a taxi? Whatever. It'll take a few seconds. Someone's going to help you. If you've got friends on the ground, leverage that. Don't let disaster strike. All right. So we found them a place where they were able to stay for a little bit of time, not the cheapest, but it gave them a lot of space and a pool and they were able to relax a little bit. Again, instead of going out and finding an apartment, once they were into a situation that was a little bit more comfortable, as far as I know, they were pretty much hanging in the pool and using room service instead of looking for an apartment. Every time I talked to them, they weren't ready to look for an apartment yet. By about day five, I talked to the dad and, and we had a conversation and he's like, oh, no, I'm actually at the airport. I'm leaving. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, what's going on? You just got here. Like, you haven't even started to settle in. You haven't started to do, you like, been on vacation mode for almost a week. What are you doing? Your whole family is waiting to find, oh, no, they're good. I have to go back to work. And it turned out, I had no idea. His plan was they were not moving fully whatsoever, doing exactly the dipping their toe thing. The family was going to stay here and live in Nicaragua. And his plan was to fly back and forth to wherever he worked and work physically in the home country while the family stayed here. So this is the first problem from a family perspective. That's not going to go well. Anyone who has ever tried to work away from their kids, especially when you have a lot of kids, that's hard. Working away from your spouse, also hard. Put it all together. Make it, it's their first time in a new country. It was their first time away from the kids for a whole bunch of, I guess it wasn't their first time out of the country. I know they had been to uh, a few other countries like in Africa, but very little, right? And then suddenly, first time away from the kids, first time going to work in a different place. This doesn't make any sense. They weren't going to take the tax advantages of the move. So it made it 30, 40, 50, even 60% more expensive, depending on what part of which country you're coming from. It literally can be a 60% penalty on that income. The cost of all those flights, no matter how cheap Nicaragua, even if Nicaragua was free, the cost of the flights will add up, right? Because if you're doing it all the time, you don't have the flexibility of going when it's cheap. Just, just a lot of things could go wrong. So long before they had even begun to evaluate anything, because they had been in vacation mode. They hadn't actually been looking at life. They hadn't been looking at the places where they, and not one night did they stay in one of the places, regions, that they were considering moving to. So they had never gotten to a point where they were going to stay for even one night in a neighborhood or near a neighborhood where they were considering living. So this was just total full on vacation, just that emergency settle in before deciding what to do. So he's already on a plane leaving them. And he said, ah, oh, my wife will be able to do all the stuff on her own. She's fine. And that was the last we heard of them. I never heard back, but I heard from the people at the hotel. They said they made it for four days four days. So they had already spent way more than that in vacation mode. As far as I know, they never went and looked at an apartment. They never asked us a single thing. They didn't ask us how to get groceries. They didn't ask us where to look for an apartment. We gave them areas, but they didn't, uh, like at no point were they asking for how to get transport there. Nothing. We were asking we're like, Hey, everything. Okay. No one responded. And that's fine. Like we're not there. We're not their keepers, you know, but we were trying to be helpful. And, uh, so quickly, it was all of a sudden they were gone. They had decided Nicaragua was too expensive, too expensive. They were throwing away money like crazy. They weren't taking the relocation seriously. They weren't taking their taxes and work seriously. They hadn't lined up a career that allowed them to move all things that you should do before. I mean, it's okay. Like my buddy, Josie Marr, who was just on the show the other day and he's on, he talks on the live streams a lot. He lives in a really nice part of Nicaragua and he flies to and from the United States on a regular basis. He works in the U S and just every month flies up, works, flies back. And some people do that. As long as you know what you're doing, that's fine. But for most people, that's not going to make sense. And some people just want to do that. They like their job, but he's single. He's able to do a lot of that stuff really easily. It doesn't cause any problems. It doesn't make his life difficult. He likes working that way. He could take a lower paying job and switch his taxes around. But for him, this makes sense, at least for now, right? But he's pretty flexible and he knows what he's doing. 
With this, this was definitely a dipping their toes scenario. They were not making plans for how they were going to leverage the cost advantages of Nicaragua. Between not taking the tax advantage and, and having this really expensive flight, it was very difficult to then offset any other potential costs with the cost savings in housing and food. Yes, those would be cheaper. And yes, they should have been enough to offset it eventually, but it would have been a really hard thing and not the big slam dunk. No country could be because of these other costs that were not being uh, uh, offset. And then there's no way to offset. There just isn't enough uh, expenditures in life that will offset the huge expenditures they were adding, the huge amount of tax burden and the unbelievable travel costs. Plus, suddenly going from never been away from your family to no longer living with your family. I don't know how much he was going to work, but it was my impression was it was going to be a pretty significant amount of time. So they were going into a scenario where they were not as a family prepared for this in any way. They hadn't tested him working away from the family without the family moving or anything of the sort. Like if you're going to do something like that, which first of all, probably you don't want to in general, right? If you're going to have a bunch of kids, you probably don't want to be creating a scenario where you leave them behind a significant amount of the time. I know some people have jobs that there's just no way around it. It's what their career demands. You know, if you're a truck driver, often there's nothing you can do. If you're a, you know, um, an oil rig operator out at sea, what are you going to do? If you're a fisherman out in the ocean, you know, there's things that just, there's just no way around it. But in general, if you have a job that allows you to be home all the time, suddenly deciding that you're simply going to move your family away from your your job and you're not going to move your job is almost certainly going to create problems, whether it's something you can handle or not, but it's going to be a problem. So generally, you're, go you're going to want to avoid that. But if you are going to do that, you need to make sure that you're able to do it before you move, not move to a new country. The number of things that they did that were so shocking all lumped together just didn't make any sense. Moving to a country without having evaluated it in person, that part seems to have gone okay. But that was a crazy, crazy move, very reckless, having no plan of where to stay. They had no idea how to house this huge number of people. They didn't have a budget for people to stay even in hostels because some of them were like small children. They couldn't all be on their own. There just was no reasonable means of housing that many people moving around without a solid plan. So they came with no way to transport or house the people that they brought with them. They figured they would just figure that out on the ground. You, you, yeah. You can come to Nicaragua sight unseen for any number of things, but not when you want to move in a huge group larger than vehicles are available for and larger than apartments and, and hotels are available for. Like they had so many people that it was larger than most hotels could accommodate in a single family. Like this is a major logistical problem that they had. <clears throat> They then completely blew off any responsibility of figuring out how to move and totally set themselves up for failure and just treated it like a weird family vacation where they weren't really vacationing very well, but kind of with no plan and no idea of what they wanted to do. Then immediately, long before they were settled, the father left them so that he wasn't there to be involved in anything. And then they didn't even remotely give it enough time to figure out how much it cost, asked no one for help, got no guidance on anything, and were gone so fast that it makes it's blinding. So the thing is, what would make so many people, this huge number of people, move to a place where you have no commitment? No interest. It was clear that there was no interest in the move. Something was clearly wrong because if you wanted to make the move, you, you, all these budget items you could have known ahead of time, there should be no cost surprises. There's no way it wasn't much cheaper than where they, where they were coming from unless like back home they were staying with family and it was free and then, oh, well, in Nicaragua, we don't have that family. We didn't think about it. Now we have to pay rent and that doesn't, right? There's things like that. That can happen. But this was extreme. But so many people, we see a number of people doing this. The one a year ago, we had that person who moved down and claimed to have done all this research, but part of it was hubris. They said, well, I lived in Costa Rica and I know these things. And nothing he knew about Costa Rica was true. He didn't know what it cost. He didn't know how things worked. He was very, very clueless about other countries. He was coming from a super low cost location where he just didn't like things. I don't know. And then moved to Nicaragua, never gave it a try, never came and visited Nicaragua, didn't have a realistic expectation of even what Costa Rica was like, let alone Nicaragua, completely jumped in. That part was good. He went in a whole hog. He didn't, but 
without having tested it. So when he got here, anything, when you do that, anything that goes wrong, if you haven't tested the waters, you're gonna be suddenly feeling very trapped in most cases. Now, like Jimmy, who's coming down, he's very able to just be like, oh, I could pack up and leave if I needed to. And knowing that he could makes it very easy not to. But when you know that you can't, or it'd be incredibly painful to move out, then you're gonna have this feeling of being trapped. And that makes everything seem worse. It makes your brain paint it in a negative light. So that's a risk. And I think that's what was going on here that they were feeling trapped. I know this other person, they felt trapped because they hadn't done any planning. Nothing was that they didn't ask the right questions. They didn't ask about the culture. They didn't ask about, they had they were so picky. This is a different person, right? They were so picky about food. They didn't want to eat anything that was cost effective here. Everything had to be shipped in from a different country. So those things are going to be super expensive, more expensive than even shipping it into most countries. You know, you could get the same thing shipped into Panama or Costa Rica, probably cheaper because we're getting them shipped in there and then shipped here in many cases. All right. So it's a, you got to apply some logic and apply some effort if you're going to do this. Now, if you're just single, and you got, you don't care. You're like, I can just move to a new country. And if I like it, I stay. And if I don't, I move on. And if you're, you know, cool with that, perfect. I can do that. That's me, right? I can easily, you could today pick any country on earth, send me there. And I'd be like, I can do this, right? I would never be in a panic over it. And, uh, but if you have, you got kids, you got animals, you're, you're packing up your life stuff, you're selling things, you're making huge commitments that depend on this being your, your option. You need to do some research, do some due diligence Always scout a place out first. Always make sure you do enough planning that you're not in a panic. I realize that it's the hardest thing coming to Nicaragua, and I say this so much, is finding that, that middle-term apartment. If you want to find a house that you can live in long-term and save tons and tons of money, fantastic. You're going to be able to do that, but you've got to get to that point. It's going to take time, and you need a short-term living situation to get to that point, and those are super hard to get here. So you're going to be in hotels, in hostels, doing some Airbnb for quite some time and you have to accommodate that. So if you aren't accommodating that, you're gonna have a problem. So that's something you need to do. Make sure that's worked into your budget. That's going to be a pain point of first coming to Nicaragua. Now, if you're like, Cami, come stay in a hostel, find friends, crash with them, she's good to go, right? And it's gonna cost about the same as getting a low cost apartment. but in little bits, right? So she's very flexible with that. But for most people, they want a place of their own. They, they're not okay just staying in a hostel where there's, you know, shared room with just a, um, a lock box or whatever. They want something more. If you want something more than that, you need to know how long it's gonna take or what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to accommodate for that, plan for that, and at least have enough time before you arrive. You know, make the plans for the next place. This is a big deal because when you're coming in, right? You, you get in off the airport and you come out of the airplane, you need a place to go. And that was where everything fell apart for all of these people is that they weren't sure what they were going to do the moment they were off the plane and they didn't have enough time built in to get to the next place at any point. Never did they have a plan for the next place. So every time they would arrive at one place, it would be, how long can we stay? How long can we afford to stay? What are we gonna do about the next place? And at no point were they ever looking for an apartment. Never were they able to get to trying to actually find a place to live. They were never able to do anything that would make sense and save them money because they were immediately dealing with tomorrow night or tonight. And that doesn't work. I know some of this stuff sounds outrageously obvious, but in the real world, this is people who are moving down to Nicaragua. Yeah, it's not the norm, but it's enough that we see it happening every so often. And we really do need to caution people about it that I know we talk about how you need to just just come down, just make it happen. Just, But we mean come down and scout, give it a week or two, maybe a month. And, you know, stay in a hotel, stay in a hostel, travel around, get to know the country. Don't come down with 100 people and, and need to take over a village and not be able to move anywhere because you don't have a vehicle. Like, you need to be reasonable. Do your research. Make sure you have a plan that will work. And in this case, like, it, just everything. I don't think their life decision was going to work no matter where they were. I don't think it would have worked had they stayed home. And they didn't have realistic expectations. They had no expectations. And they put in no effort. When presented with a near-emergency living situation they completely just blew it off and didn't take it seriously and just left it to be this panic of, oh, we don't know where we're going to stay tonight and we don't have a vehicle that can move all of us and we have infant and toddler who can't just be thrown in a taxi and taken anywhere and we have a lot of people so there's a lot of problems. Like when you have 
so many kids that you don't have enough adults to maneuver them all. You need to plan pretty hard, and this is just something that parents need to know. When we traveled Europe with two kids, yeah, each of us could grab one, and it was pretty flexible, but even then, we're taking car seats everywhere and strollers and backpacks that you could put the kids in, and we had a lot of planning to accommodate for that, and uh, and that was hard enough as it was with two kids, but this was a huge number. Like, it's just crazy. So I want to remind people that we do see failures and that you can't just come to Nicaragua and absolutely blow off all aspects of due diligence and expect it to be successful. Nowhere is so easy that you're going to show up and have to do nothing. No one is going to accommodate every scenario at the blink of an eye with, with no planning and no communications, no contact. At no point did they ever get a working phone. At no point did they have a plan for the next few hours. So, of course, every moment felt like panic and nothing seemed like it was making sense. They had to eat, they had to feed all these people from restaurants because they never got to a point where they had a kitchen. They were never thinking about how they were going to deal with the next meal, let alone the next night's sleep. Really need a little bit better planning than that. If you're using your relocation as your first time to ever leave the house, you may need to rethink that. It's not a good time to combine learning how to travel, learning how to rent an apartment, learning how to cook, whatever, with learning how to move to a new country and do all those things in a new language where you have no contacts, no working cell phone. Like there's just a lot of things they didn't have figured out. Some of us have those things figured out ahead of time. I use T-Mobile. I can go to any of these countries. I don't need to plan ahead. My phone works on arrival instantly. I'm, I'm still on the tarmac and I'm able to send messages. If you don't have that, then you need to be, you need to do a lot of extra planning. If you're, if you're taking the luxury of having a American only cell service or a Canadian only cell service, then you have to do extra planning. But if you have a good quality international one like T-Mobile, then you get the luxury of not having to do that because we're paying for that extra service that makes us not have to do those things. I think it's still cheaper. So paying for is a weird way of putting it, but that's, we choose it specifically because it makes us able to move anywhere in the world, anytime, travel and do all those things without a problem. But if you're using Verizon uh, or AT&T, you're going to have a lot more problems, right? And you just, that's something you choose. So you have to, even those things are things you have to plan if you want it to be smooth or, you know, not plan if it's not something that's a priority for you. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys some tips based on real world failures that we've seen that could easily have been avoided. Now, maybe this wasn't the right choice for them and, and nothing would have actually made it the right choice. But we could have kept it from being the kind of failure that it was with any common sense at all. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the work that we're doing here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, you can like, subscribe, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you'd be so kind, click one of the videos up on the screen or scroll down and click one of the ones that comes up down there. That will do a lot to tell the algorithm that you're enjoying the show. I appreciate it.